We're now on part two of the vaccine preventable of bacterial diseases. Sorry for that quick cut off on that other video. I didn't realize it was the last slide and it just cuts you right off. Anyway, so this one we're going to talk about meningococcal meningitis. So basically how meningococcal meningitis, so this is a this is a condition where you're going to have meningitis caused by a meningococcal bacteria. All right, so this is transmitted by sneezing or coughing on someone, so anything that comes out of your face. Also, if you're kissing people, um, if you're sharing anything with saliva, so drinks, cigarettes, musical instruments, um, and also when you're living in close quarters. So quite often, not all the time, but every now and then you'll hear about a menin meningitis outbreak in university dormitories and everyone's in a big rush to get vaccinated because someone's got meningitis. So this is one you'll hear about sometimes when you're in crowded conditions. Okay, so what are the symptoms of meningitis or the meningococcal meningitis? All right, so again, we have a fever, we've got our tiredness, we've got a headache. Now what we do is we've got really, really stiff, sore neck, all right? And this is because our, the meninges that are lining the um, spinal cord are all infected. So you have a really hard time with turning your neck. There's a lot of neck stiffness there, okay? Um, and if that's not bad enough, we can end up in dum -dum -dum, a coma, all right? 10% um, of all cases end up just outright dying. Again, we can have that sepsis in our blood, so our septicemia. Um, and the, the antibiotics for this or this, the um, treatment for this is intravenous antibiotics because you've got bacteria that are deep within the body. They're into the meninges, which is really hard to get antibiotics into in the first place. So we're going to have to go in with heavy guns and make sure we're getting antibiotics deep within the flesh. Okay, so who causes this? Well, here's our little meningococcus bacteria, all right, Men Neisseria meningitides. You can see their little diplococcus, all right, they're gram negative, they live together, um, they stick onto the cells. You are going to find this worldwide. So again, you want to be vaccinated against this. If you want to do any traveling, you want to be able to be vaccinated against this. Now, this is some of the areas where it's worse, not to say it's not found in other areas, but again, these are areas where we don't have good vaccination rates in the first place. So you want to make sure that your you and your family and your children are protected as much as they possibly can be. All right. So here is just a little indication of um, the different types of meningococcal disease that there are through the years. All right. Here we have somebody again who's in sepsis. So this is an infection in the bloodstream. Now these limbs, as they get more and more infected, the tissue is literally dying and you can end up having to have some of your limbs cut off because the, f the flesh is literally being killed by the bacteria. All right, here again, here's your brain with all the pus around the outside. So that's your men men oh, meningitis, all right? And here's a wee baby with meningitis. Again, you wanna make sure that everyone around those newborn babies or those little kids are protected against this because you don't want them bringing this disease to your little guys. All right, so those are the ones that we just do the routine um, vaccinations for. Now cholera, if anyone's ever been traveling and you take the Ducarol before you go, you've got a little bit of that um, cholera, well not a little bit, you've got, you've got a vaccine for cholera. All right. Now, cholera is one of those diseases that follows where there's a war, there's famine, there's some crazy breakdown in a country where sanitary conditions are just abysmal or non-existent. All right. Cholera is transmitted by um, is through water. So you're drinking water with the bacteria in it or you're drinking food that's being contaminated with it. Or I should say also because it is passed through feces, maybe you've got food or you've touched something that's got some of the feces with the cholera in it. All right. Basically, vaccination against cholera, they do have cholera vaccines, or you can take the Ducarol before you go on a trip that goes to any area that has untreated water and you can help prevent yourself from getting sick. All right. There's three to five million cases of cholera all over the world every year. All right. The uh, prescription basically is, well, antibiotics work up to a certain point, but the best thing so far that they found is rehydration therapy. Now, cholera has shaped history through through the years. Right. It's it's wiped out entire um, 
not entire cities and towns, but it's really gone through and wiped out quite a few people in cities and towns. Um, we had cholera epidemics here in Canada whenever there was big rush of immigrants that came over. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times those immigrants were coming from very poor unsanitary conditions they were moving into towns again living in really really slummy areas and they would bring bring cholera and then you know it would just be in really slummy areas so it was one of the things that um, health agencies first did was to you know really clean up areas and and treat the water and make sure we had proper sewage disposal so that cholera wouldn't continually run through uh, poor areas but again it still does in other areas Okay, so we get it, there's dirty water that we're, not we, but that people have to live with. Okay, so what are the signs and symptoms? Well, you have profuse watery diarrhea. If you've ever cooked rice, right? If you've ever looked at the water <clears throat> that comes from cooking rice, the, the, the diarrhea looks like this. <clears throat> and this is diarrhea that just flows out of your body, all right? It's just gushing out of your body you're losing literally all your body throughout the whole entire day all right you've got vomiting a lot of times as well you've got leg cramps because you're just flushing all the electrolytes out of your body as this water is just running out of you all right obviously dehydration um, you can go into shock because your blood volume falls so quickly it's you could be alive in the morning and dead by that time at night all right so it goes really really quickly um, here's your little vibrio cholera all right it's got that little comma shape and here it's got a flagella because it lives and is transmitted through water all right it's gram negative it's got the comma shape here it's got the flagella it is the second leading cause of death in children under five in the world okay so okay, remember this is in areas of the world where we don't have sanitary conditions right here's what the poop literally looks like and then here's what these are the cholera treatment centers now this is a really nice place so they have cholera cots and what a cholera cot is it's a cot it's got a hole in the bottom and there's a bucket underneath that is just catching everything that's coming out of the patient's behind so that the um, healthcare workers can see how much they need to rehydrate the person the patient all right, so the patients you can see here are hooked up to IV um, treatment and the IV treatment is really quite simple. Oh, there's a little dehydrated baby. I'll put the recipe up for it in a little bit. Now, during the war, it was quite interesting because again, we've got war, we've got famine, we've got people living in horrible conditions. And they thought that cholera was caused because the men were laying on the ground to shoot and their, their bladder was getting cold so there was a, a, a call to make cholera belts so for women to knit belts that would go across the bellies of the soldiers so that they could keep their um, bladders warm so they didn't end up with cholera but meanwhile it's just because they were drinking filthy water all right here's some of the um, prevention from the olden days so make sure everyone's clean rooms are clean don't leave rubbish lying around the house or outside let off all stagnant water um, let the house be whitewashed with hot lime so you'll see whitewashing it's um uh it, this lime substance actually did kill a lot of bacteria or fungus or mold or anything else that was growing on the houses so whitewashing your house actually did cut cut down on a lot of disease that could be in there <laughs> beware of drunkenness no, nothing is so likely to bring on disease so this is you know if anyone sees with sickness light vomiting and purging a burning feet heat at the stomach with cramps of various parts of the body and feeling cold all over it is probably the cholera all right, so here's some information of how to prevent cholera in different languages. So don't poop at all just out in the open or near water sources. Make sure you're getting clean water. Make sure you're boiling your water before you cook it. And then make sure that um, to treat it, you're using corn and uh, rice to try to bind up your body. Okay, here is the cure or not the cure, the treatment. So it's one liter of clean boiled water with eight level teaspoons of sugar and half a level teaspoon of salt. That is honestly the treatment for cholera. And you just gotta keep making sure that the people just completely rehydrate over and over and over again because they are getting rid of all their bodily fluid with this bacteria. 
All right, now another one that you are going to be vaccinated against if you go for a trip, or hopefully you'll be vaccinated against, is traveler's diarrhea. So again, you're getting this for e eating or drinking contaminated uh, food or fluids. So you're gonna end up with stomach cramps, you're gonna end up with nausea, you're gonna end up with vomiting, you're gonna end up with bloating, and just that general feeling unwell. I know years ago before they had this Duke Raw stuff out, I remember people going on trips and just, you know, they always said the first three to five days they just spent in the, in the hotel room on the toilet. All right, so the symptoms are sudden and last three to five days. So you get there, you're feeling great, and then all of a sudden, you're sick. All right, um, however, if you're not a traveler, if you're someone who's living in unsanitary conditions, uh, 157,000 deaths per year, again, mainly children because they dehydrate so quickly and they're, they just die of dehydration. So this is one of, remember we said we're E. coli, we've got some good E. coli and we've got some bad E. coli. Well, this is one of the bad guys, okay? So then this is enterotoxogenic E. coli, sorry, E-T-E-C. So this is a gram negative. It stains red under the microscope. It's got a definite rod shape to it. And again, this guy has a toxin which attaches to the cells of the gastrointestinal tract. All right. So obviously I don't have a picture of it, but this is, you know, an advertisement for why you should be taking Duke Roll because you're going to be at the beach and you're dying to go and, you know, you're going to end up having to wait for the bathroom. All right, so high risk foods. So this is if you're just eating any of the street meat that's there, any of the seafood that's there, you're drinking the water, you're eating any of the fruits or vegetables that have been washed in contaminated water. All right, this is the incidence of traveler's diarrhea all over the world. So it's fairly low in North America, but look, as soon as you go anywhere, you know, fun with sun and fun, mm, goes up. All right, anywhere through Africa, South America, and over here into uh, the former USSR or into Asia, you have a high chance of traveler's diarrhea, right? Australia, New Zealand see, seem to be a little bit safe. So any of these places where they have kind of iffy water sanitation, you can end up with traveler's diarrhea. All right, now this one, um, I did botulism on here because this one's kind of interesting because it's kind of the opposite, well, it's not the kind of the opposite, it's the opposite of tetanus. So where we had tetanus that causes all the muscles to get really, really tight, we've got botulism that causes, causes the muscles to become very, very soft and flaccid. Now, botulism and clostridium, both bacteria live in the same families. Um, they both live in the soil. They're both anaerobic. They both form spores, so they can just wait till conditions are perfect. So where you're going to mostly find botulism are in things like improperly compared canned foods. So when you're canning foods, if you're doing food canning, especially if you're doing, um, not especially, but if you're doing jams or jellies or if you're doing tomato-based foods, you have to make sure for tomato-based foods that you're using the pressure cooker. Follow the latest directions properly. I know a lot of people when they're making their salsas or whatever, they'll do it kind of the way that their grandma did it or whatever, and it was perfectly fine and no one ever died in my family, but you have to follow the latest in food preparation rules to get the safest way to do it, right? Home preparing canned foods is perfectly fine, but you have to make sure you do it safely. All right, unpasteurized honey, and this is one of the reasons why they tell you not to give babies under three honey, because <clears throat> their poor little bodies can't fight off the botulism bacteria. Um, if you've got infected wounds, so again, we've got street drugs, the same thing happened when we were talking about tetanus. Anywhere that, that you're going to end up getting dirt deep into your body is a problem. All right. And there, the, um, the treatment for this is having the antitoxin because again, botulism, the bacteria, it's another toxin producing organism. Alrighty, so the symptoms, you're going to end up with weakness, trouble seeing, you're going to end up with droopy eyes, trouble speaking, because all your muscles in this particular case are all like flopsy. Alright, weakness of arms, your chest and your leg muscles. Um, you can end up with paralysis and death. About 5% of people die when they end up with um, botulism. All right, here we have another clostridium. So they're in the same family as the um, tetanus, but the other one was Clostridium tetani. All right, we have their gram positive bacteria, so they stain purple, but they also have a little bit of a club shape to them as well. All right, even though it says rod shaped. 
They're anaerobic, so remember they live in the soil until p conditions are perfect, which is deep into your gut. So what happens is you eat the honey or the um, the spore, if you've eaten tomatoes or whatever that haven't been um, canned properly, the spore just kind of passes through your stomach. It's all happy. Once it gets into your intestinal tract or into your intestines, that's when it hatches, attaches, and starts to produce that toxin. All right, it's spore forming, releases toxins again. And again, Clostridium, it's found worldwide. So you have to be really careful with this as well. Um, so here's somebody with botulism with their droopy eyes because they cannot hold their eyes open at all because the muscles are completely flaccid. And here's a wee baby with um, botulism. So they're just, they're just all flopsy, right? Um, so best thing to do really, really quickly, rush to the hospital, get the antitoxin, and then hopefully you're fine. Okay, I believe there's an episode of, hmm, it might be ER in the olden days, and they were, uh, the, the little baby had, um, not a little baby, one of the sisters of a little baby had been given the baby honey, unpasteurized honey, to make the baby stop crying, and that's what the baby ended up having, botulism. Anyway, okay, so we're done the bacteria... Um, which were vaccine preventable plus a couple extras so once again there'll be a quiz for all this stuff you got 10 chances um, the highest mark count so you can get 100% in between quizzes if you miss something go back read your notes go back do another quizlet and come back to it no problem do it as many times I'd, I'd rather you learn it and get 100% than just kind of flip flop through it alrighty um, all right that's it for now Oh, I know what else. There's going to be, um, I'll post that chart as well. So make sure you go through, rearrange your notes, put them into the chart so it'll help you study a little bit better. Alrighty, done -zo.